Hello world, we're here today at CWIT for the CWIT 2023 conference. I'm your host, Chris Lang, and I'm joined today by Mary. Good morning, Mary. How are you doing today? Good morning, Chris. I'm great. Thank you so much for having me. Great. Thank you. So I did just want to start today with introducing you to the audience. So maybe you could just give us a little bit of your background and your role. Yeah, sure. So I'm Mary Strain. I'm based in Philadelphia. I started my career as a middle school teacher in the Bronx in New York City. Um, and from there, I worked in a lot of um, educational technology companies, so focused on sort of teaching, learning, and innovation in the education space. Um, worked for a blockchain company oh. for a short period of time that was doing verifiable credentials for academic records, which was really exciting and cool. And then uh, found my way to AWS, where I lead our artificial intelligence and machine learning go-to-market strategy for education and public sector. Oh, that's awesome. And I'm really excited. The, the energy is palpable today here at C2023. So the conference is really focused on building a healthier, safer, and more sustainable future. So just in, in your own words, how would you define what does that future look like? Yeah, I'm glad that that's a focus of the conference. And I think it really does help infuse technologists in particular with sort of a sense of mission and purpose around supporting projects that support a future that we can all live in. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I like the, the you know, uh, we saw some presentations about sustainability and efforts and research around there. And I think one of the things that we can do is think about how we use technology to advance those capabilities. So how do we use artificial intelligence and particularly generative AI in a way that is uh, not climate damaging, which is a big deal because compute resources burn a lot of energy. AWS is super proud of our effort to, um, you know, be climate neutral by 2020, by 2030, um, you know, and, and the work that we're doing around sort of, um, you know, uh, zero impact in terms of compute. But I do think that that has to underlie a lot of the effort here and a lot of the work. So we can't separate sort of technology and advancements and innovation from yeah. a commitment to a more sustainable future. No, definitely. And I know today in your talk, you're really talking about how that, you know, impact and how we can really be forward looking with what we're building and what we're doing. So I, I would just also now ask, so for students or workers or anyone who's, you know, interested in getting involved with that type of technology, all these different machine learning resources, what kind of advice would you have someone if, you know, maybe they're, they're still an undergraduate or if they're looking to totally different uh, career paths and transitioning, what kind of advice would you have for someone who's interested in getting involved in building that bigger, better and beautiful future? Yeah, and I think um, I'm so glad you asked that because, as I mentioned, I was a middle school teacher and I have an undergraduate degree in history and a graduate degree in policy. So I do not have a technology <laughs> background, but I am working in artificial intelligence at AWS. And so I think one of the things that I would encourage folks to do is learn to learn, learn to learn for the rest of your life, because by the end of this interview, the technology we're talking about will have changed. And so what people learn in undergraduate sort of a technical skill or whatever is great foundation, but really what you need to be able to do is be curious, ask questions. Every job I've ever had, every career move I've ever made was because I was really just interested in cool things and interested in innovation. So reading, talking to people, staying engaged um, in, in, in areas that you're passionate about and interested in, you'll find your way. Yeah, no, I think that that's such a great point, really just having that perspective and really just trying to, as much as you can, always be open to new technologies, taking a look at that landscape and seeing what is out there and what is really kind of shaping the world and just having that, you know, mentality of, you know, I want to be involved in this, I want to learn and always take that approach of like, you know, even if you are an expert in your field, there's always someone you can talk to and other ways that you can grow together and work on these different things. Yeah, so I know, I, oh, go ahead. I just want to say, never let sort of what your perceived lack of technical skill prevent you from going after a position, a role, an experience. Um, because I, I often find that there are a lot of people with a lot of technical skills that can't communicate. There are a lot of people with a lot of technical skills that can't sort of have a vision for products. And so we need people who have sort of, I think, a more well-rounded experience there. Um, not, not that the technical background isn't important and helpful, but I do think that people should uh, not limit themselves at all. Yeah, definitely having that broad sense of community where, where everyone is welcome and, and we all want to help build that, you know, more sustainable future together. And it takes people from different, you know, a lot of different backgrounds and a lot of different skill sets to really all come together and empower each other to kind of build that future, I think. Yeah, and that diversity of backgrounds and perspectives, I think it makes those solutions so much better, right? And yeah. so we can engage lots of different people from different, you know, backgrounds in, in building technology and building solutions. That's critical. Yeah, no, I think that that's something we really try to focus uh, on at the center here. So really just making sure that we engage across 
the you know the the wide spectrum of different backgrounds and skills. So we we do have a annual hackathon, and that's something where you know for me on, on my perspective, I very much get excited by that because we're bringing it's not just computer science background students, it's not just technology background and STEM background. It's really people across all of the different arts. We have artists who come in to participate in our hackathon. We have you know history majors, English majors, every major you could think of really comes in and, and just. Get, getting everyone in the same room together to work on a problem is something that I find is so effective and so energizing. It really is something that uh, builds me up. So I think that that's a really great point. And now for the, the question, I think that, you know, it's on all of our minds right now. So chat GPT and machine learning, all these different uh, technologies that have kind of entered our collective consciousness. I was just wondering, you know, from, from your perspective and with your background in machine learning and these things, how has that impacted your day to day? How do you think that has, you know, really kind of permeated into the collective consciousness and what should, yeah, what should we know really about that. Um, I think we are at the infancy of what the capabilities are of this technology. I think it's utterly transformative, wow. utterly. And I think that we need to be thinking about um, how we exist in our work, in our school, in our day-to-day -day lives with essentially a co-creator of knowledge. You know, right. this idea that all of the undifferentiated work that we potentially don't want to do can be done by technology, um, whether it's everything from scheduling and we already know ordering groceries um, or, you know, having access to information at a very, very, very large scale. And I think, you know, there are there is a lot of attention, especially at the university level on sort of the concerns around generative capabilities and generative AI and scholarship and plagiarism, things like Definitely. that. We need to get over it. Um, we can't police it. Uh, we need to be able to use it. So what I think of when I think of, you know, generative AI in a classroom, especially, you know, if a student is, is generating a response to an essay and you're confused as to whether it's AI generated or student generated, there's something wrong with your assignment, right? You need to be thinking about how do we help students deconstruct generative AI conversations, how, how they uh, fact check, how they look at it as an exemplar to help build and better and create new. Um, it's only generating content that already exists, right? Yeah. So we need to be able to continue to generate content that doesn't exist, and that's going to be a human capability. Yeah, and I think that, you know, very much so making sure that we're using the technology to enable and accelerate our lives where we have these, they're out in the world, these different machine learning technologies, and, and how can we embrace that and really yeah. kind of bring that into what we're doing, right? Yeah. I think, kind of I think the, the administrative work and the, um, some of the work that we're doing now, people are overwhelmed anyway. Nobody's yeah. sitting there saying, I don't have enough work to do. Mm -hmm. But what they, we have to say, what do you want to stop doing? Right. Nobody goes to work, um, you know, saying, I, I don't really want to do the core part of my job that's engaging customers or engaging students or engaging people. That part of the work is typically what people are engaged in. Right. They don't want to take attendance. They don't want to fill out forms. They don't want to process data. And if you can allow the technology to do that, it allows us to focus on the you know higher value experiences. Yeah, and the work. things that you know we can really make those connections and do those you know personal uh, you know human to human type of interactions where we can let the schedule be kind of handled by an AI system and really just enable that technology yeah. to help us right yeah. from that yeah. sense of things. So. Uh, I did just want to thank uh, Mary for joining us today on our Talking Tech podcast here at the CWIT 2023 conference. So thanks for joining us, everyone, today. Thank you again, Mary. Thank you and so much. We'll catch you all on the next episode. Thank you.